Hello, welcome to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency video about community advisory groups and steps on how to form one. In this presentation, we discuss what is a community advisory group or CAG, the steps for forming a CAG, the roles and responsibilities of CAG members, the roles and responsibilities of EPA, understanding technical assistance, and where to go for technical assistance. A community advisory group, or CAG, is a self-organized informal group that serves as a forum to exchange information between the EPA, other government agencies, and the local community. The main purpose is to address community questions, interests, and concerns about the cleanup of a Superfund site. The number of people in a CAG can vary depending on the community, but CAGs typically have representatives that are directly impacted by or have an interest in the site investigation and cleanup. A diverse CAG membership allows all sectors of a local community to participate in decisions about site plans and other environmental issues. Although final site decisions are the responsibility of EPA, the agency looks to the CAG to gain a better understanding of how certain decisions will affect the community as well as to help communicate site information to those who may be impacted. By serving as a public forum for community members, a CAG allows its members to learn more technical details about the cleanup steps and empowers them to be knowledgeable partners with EPA in the cleanup decision-making process. It ensures that their perspective and voices are part of recommendations and helps EPA make better decisions. A CAG may be advisable where there are individuals or groups with a high level of interest in a site. Forming a CAG can be helpful in communities that lack an existing group or with multiple competing groups that have different views. A CAG can also be helpful in a community with environmental justice concerns. Environmental justice is the fair treatment and meaningful involvement of all people regardless of race, color, national origin, or income with respect to the development, implementation, and enforcement of environmental laws, regulations, and policies. Once the need for a CAG has been established, the next step to form a CAG is deciding who the members will be. This involves identifying the groups or viewpoints that need to be represented and who specifically will represent them on the CAG. Once CAG membership is established, the group will need to create and agree on operating procedures and ground rules. Creating rules of conduct will ensure open communication among members and other attendees. Next, the CAG will need to determine leadership within the group. The CAG can select a chair or co-chairs, or the group can also decide to form a leadership council consisting of a few members. After the CAG has established membership, operating procedures, and leadership, your group will begin to meet on a regular basis. CAG members determine the schedule and meeting locations that best suit their needs and interests. All general meetings of the CAG are open to the public and are publicized in advance. This ensures that every member of the community has an opportunity to become involved and express an opinion about the site and the process. Members of the CAG should include residents or homeowners near the site, anyone potentially affected by the site risks, local health professionals, local environmental or public interest groups, local business owners and grassroots organizations, Native Americans, racially and ethnically diverse groups, low-income members, and renters. EPA government units or agencies and potentially responsible parties cannot join the CAG. However, the CAG may invite representatives from these units and agencies to share and exchange information about the site and cleanup decisions at regular meetings so everyone can benefit from their insight and expertise. There are four ways a community can determine who to include in the CAG. The first method is to form a screening panel. EPA can help the community organize a short-term screening panel to review nominations for CAG membership. The screening panel should also represent the diversity of the community and should have a leader. Potential nominees should be able to demonstrate the ability to communicate to the entire community. The panel 
will identify a list of recommended CAG members and submit that list to EPA for review and comment only. EPA cannot approve members. The process should be transparent. A second option is that an existing group in your community might be selected as the CAG if that group represents the diverse interests of the community. If the group does not appear representative of the community, EPA can suggest that the group expand membership to include community interests that are not represented. Third, EPA, in consultation with the local government, could select a core group that represents the diverse interests of the community. The application process for the core group might include self-nomination. The members of the core group would then select the remaining members of the CAG in a fair and open manner. Finally, you, the local community members, can identify CAG members that you believe represent the diverse interests in your community. It is fairly typical for the EPA or other community networks to advertise the creation of a CAG and to receive self-nominating volunteers who step forward and voice their interest. A CAG member's main responsibilities are to attend and constructively participate in meetings, learn about technical aspects of the site, and share their opinions. Members may decide to form small work groups to address particular site issues more closely. As a CAG member, you are a representative of your group or community interests. Another responsibility is for the group members to take the information received in a CAG meeting and share it with the broader community. All members are expected to work together to get answers and to reach agreement when needed. EPA will attend CAG meetings, provide site updates and information, and listen and respond to community concerns identified by members related to the Superfund site. The agency may also provide training for the CAG, depending on the group's needs. EPA may provide limited logistical and administrative support and will also continue regular communication practices to keep the community informed about plans and decisions throughout the cleanup process. In some circumstances, the community may need additional support to understand science, regulations, and policies related to a site and its cleanup. In these cases, EPA can offer resources to make sure the community fully understands all aspects of a site's environmental issues and help the community participate more meaningfully in decision-making. This is known as Superfund Technical Assistance for Communities. This service can also better enable the CAG and individual group members to share the information with other community members. Technical assistance can include a technical assistance needs assessment for the group, access to a technical advisor who can read or review, summarize, and clearly explain scientific reports, terms, or studies related to the site and provide their insight, training on various topics including technical and scientific concepts, environmental programs, policy and regulations, and environmental issues impacting the community, facilitation support so that any controversies between CAG or community members can be avoided or resolved, dispute resolution services to help resolve conflicts among CAG or community members, or between EPA and a community to ensure all interests are identified and addressed through discussions and mediation among conflicting parties, and other types of support that can help with the operation of a CAG. Technical assistance cannot be used for developing new information, such as testing or monitoring, or for reopening or challenging final EPA decisions. It also cannot be used for political activities or lobbying, or activities related to lawsuits or other legal issues, including legal fees. Technical assistance plans may not be used for group members' travel or independent training or tuition expenses 
or group parties or celebrations. EPA's Conflict Prevention and Resolution Center, CPRC, is the agency's primary resource for services and expertise in alternative dispute resolution, environmental conflict resolution, consensus building, and collaborative problem solving. The CPRC provides training support and neutral facilitators and mediators to assist with environmental projects. A neutral facilitator is someone who does not have a stake in the outcome of a meeting, is impartial, and treats all parties fairly. A neutral facilitator can help a CAG develop a mission statement, bylaws, and operating procedures, establish member roles and responsibilities, form a leadership council, prepare meeting agendas, ensure meetings are productive and are run smoothly, and help reach agreement when needed. CAG Keys to Success It is very important for everyone to come to CAG meetings and express their views. It is also important to be open to all viewpoints. Patience is important when forming and being involved with a CAG. Changes will not happen overnight, but with continued involvement, CAGs can find success. Although the cleanup process can be long and complicated, the members of the CAG are committed to stick it out and to keep the community informed each step of the way. The community's voice in the decisions is stronger when the whole community participates in the process. In conclusion, a CAG is a mechanism that can help your community work with EPA in making site-related decisions. The CAG should represent the diversity of your community and the various concerns and viewpoints. Also, EPA can help your community form a CAG and help your group access resources for day-to-day -day operations. For more information, visit www.epa.gov slash superfund slash superfund hyphen community hyphen advisory hyphen groups, where you'll find resources such as fact sheets, a toolkit to help you set up, organize, and run your CAG, guidance on CAG best practices, and contacts who can assist further.